Hello, hello. Oh, this is working. Woohoo! Welcome, welcome. I'm glad to see so many of you joining the awesome panel we're gonna have right now. So we have a list of guests here. So um, just let's call it Alan Kaplan. He's here. Yes, there you are. Al Capone. Al Capone. We have Arnold Nessis. We have Mojo Kid. Is he here? Yes, he is here. And we have Inon Zur. And where's Don Gunnar Mulda? Okay. So he's a bit hangover, I guess. So um, I'm Ari Pulkinen, your moderator. So let's start with the intros first. So let's go from here. Start. So who are you? What do you do? <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Arnold. been a composer for games for the past six years, seven years, something like that. Um, and today I have my own company named Capritia Productions, and we're turning music albums to video games, working with uh, artists from Guns N' Roses, Evanescence, Within Temptation, so, and uh, actually making musical games. Hi, everyone. Alon Kaplan here. I am a composer and sound designer uh, for film, video games, theater. Uh, I'm from Israel, and uh, yeah, let's rock. Morning, everybody. Are you awake? That, that, that sounds good. Hi, my name is Ino Anzur. I'm a game composer uh, for the last 20 years. I composed a few games that you maybe know, uh, the Fallout series, Fallout 4, 3, Vegas, uh, Dragon Age, Prince of Persia, Crisis. Um, so, yep, that's pretty much it. Hello, my name is Inon, also known as uh, Mojo Kid. I make music and sound design for games, and uh, I specialize in adaptive music. Um, I think this is actually the first time in history that two people called Inon are on the same stage, both game composers. In That's the a, history. In the entire history of mankind, so yeah. this is you're, you're witnessing history. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. So before we go to the trailer, I would like to ask you guys what you made to do, what made you uh, create game music, what made you go to game music size and compose music for games? Who wants to start? Yes. That's a good question. Um, I was always, like, when I was in high school, you know, I, I was a metalhead, I still am, but I really like concept albums. Uh, I like telling stories with music. And, uh, and that led me to uh, study film scoring. And I was a gamer, and I think the best stories that I've met are actually games. So it kind of led me, um, you know, from the desire to tell stories through music, it led me to um, do it for games. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I was a uh, game gamer since uh, since a little child playing Nintendo, and uh, really loved all of the soundtracks. And uh, later on, I studied uh, film scoring. And that led me very fast to games, to find my love again of the games I would play as a young child, yeah. I was never a gamer. Um, I actually came to the United States. I lived there for the last 27 years, although I am Israeli. Uh, and I basically composed a lot of music for TV and movies. Uh, if you are familiar with Power Rangers, uh, a lot of the music in Power Rangers is mine. I'm sorry about that. Um, and uh, other, so hi, Thor. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Where's the hammer? Oh, don't ask. Yeah, okay, don't worry. It's like, he is hammered, so he forgot his hammer. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, but I, in 1997, I had my first uh, opportunity to compose music and it was exactly 20 years ago uh, for a game uh, called uh, uh, Klingon Academy from uh, Star Trek. And uh, since then, after it, I, I never looked back. I love to compose for games. It's just awesome. Um, with me, the process was a bit like, um, I don't know, I, I went to school in the Berkeley School of Music 
Um, so after I studied music, music, I really wanted to do something substantial and like to touch people and something that a lot of people will enjoy. And I realized that the way that people consume music nowadays, it's very kind of spastic. They would listen to like 10 seconds of this and 10 seconds of that. People don't normally listen to like a whole album like we used to. So I really wanted my music to be like a part of a bigger experience. And I think uh, games is like the best... Um, the best way to, to, to be a part of, of this experience. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> All right, so we got Thor here. So I'm just gonna ask you introduction and one, what made you start doing video game music? Yeah, I'm Thor Mirital. I live in uh, Hamburg, I'm from Iceland. Um, what we used to make game music was, uh, I'm coming from the stage basically. I'm, uh, yeah, I started like, like singing and T nearly 20 years ago and um, yeah I um, studied opera singing and uh, I started composing as a make composing as a living first by just composing like background music for metal bands like extreme metal bands and all the synthesizers and and sample libraries background stuff that they couldn't arrange and um, into game music I came uh, when I uh, yeah at some point I was like fed up with movie it was like oh yeah this is like too linear for me sometimes i just want to have more experience uh, uh stuff going on in the music itself so i have more freedom to like create really atmospheres and um then i just decided okay let's go into game and then i, I joined some game jams and so i uh, made connection with people uh, from from the game industry and there's in hamburg there's uh, sia university um, and uh, they have like Global Game Jam and I went to the Global Game Jam and on the first Global Game Jam I started like composing for six games music at, uh, at like 48 hours and recorded sound design voiceovers and all that and um, yeah they are just knew the people and so I started with games it just happened somehow so basically we in all enjoy our work and it's cool and games are awesome so yeah of course <laughs> Anyway, so um, do we have any robot gentleman people here that made the trailer? Nice. I have some feedback for you after the show. Anyway, it's cool trailer. So the mission was here with all of these awesome composers to compose a music for the trailer, maybe some sounds as well. And uh, how much did you work with it? Like how many hours or days? Any kind of special without before we start was it hard to create that um i just made a night shift out of it so it was basically one night shift and then in the morning like mixing and that's it so it was not that difficult um yeah i worked uh, i think a couple of hours but then i i kept like revising it like um i don't know i thought about it a lot and like uh, there were like days where i like uh, kind of had it in mind then i came back home at night and i did like even like one hour of work, but it was after like a lot of thought. So it's really hard to put it into like real working hours, I think. This is good information, by the way. You know, I, I really had fun working on it. <laughs> That's what I could say. So I don't really remember how many hours I, I worked on it, but it was, it's just fun little project and, and um, just a great opportunity to try to do something a little different. Um, I started uh, one night also, like Thor, uh, did the sound effects and tied like a, a small sketch. And a few days after I went back and did something completely different and uh, yeah, that's it. Um, about a day, something a, a bit less, like part of a day, I don't remember exactly, but uh, something like that. Great. So it was awesome. Let's start about the you? show. Yes. How about you? Oh, one hour. One hour. <laughs> Yeah, I did my own version as well. So uh, I didn't say my background, but yes, Ari Pulkinen uh, worked in the game industry since 2003, professionally, my own company since 2008. Uh, Angry Birds, Trine Series, Superstars, HD, Resogun, Alienation, you name it. Good stuff. So let's start with the trailer. First, I will show the trailer without the music. So you can imagine the music yourself. I hope this works. Let's see. No? Okay. Oh, where's the mute button? Mute button. There it is. All right. Yeah. 
です。In the forest, they see dogs in the wild. The most savage. Is the will to survive. Stray. Right. Lots of inspiration there. So, who wants to go first? Well, I'll choose for you. No problem. So, we have. I will. So, I will show the original at the end. So, let's start with Alan Kaplan. Yes, don't speak yet. Nice. So, Alan, one minute. Tell me about what's going on with here. Yeah. Uh, so, I didn't know anything about the game uh, when I saw the trailer. So I tried to figure out what's going on by just seeing the trailer, and uh, I immediately saw there's kind of a tempo going on, and this is like uh, trying to tell me some kind of a story. And um, first of all, I'm trying to to to. Put a few things in the trailer to match some of the tempo and to like uh, fit the music together with the uh, text on the screen and with the, what I see. And uh, at the end, I saw that uh, maybe the last dog there is uh, something special, and this guy standing with the torch. So I try to focus on getting to that as the uh, conclusion of the the story in the trailer. Um, yeah, uh, as I told, I, I tried to do like a few takes on it, and this was the third take. At the beginning, it was uh, something completely different, maybe more uh, more uh, orchestra. And uh, then I had this idea to, to try to put something with the piano to make it more like a small story at the beginning, which is becoming bigger. And then, yeah, I started over and did that version. It worked for me. Yeah. Nice. Then we go to Arnold. Are you ready? No. <laughs> Robot. Awesome. Come here, boy. Come on. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I told him that uh, I, I, I'm the, the only one on the panel who saw the, the other version, so I said alone that our kind of reminds uh, of each other. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't know what the story was, because you can't understand a lot from uh, from the trailer story-wise, so I kind of at some point decided to try and create my own. So at the beginning, you have the like the piano with, you know, it's supposed to be the memories of the dogs, where the guy said, like, you boy, and... It, and they're cute. And then um, after I think the, the third subtitle, the idea is that you know something bad happened um, and this is what turned this dog into whatever it is now that's, if I'm honest, I, I don't know. Um, but it doesn't look like 
he looks like a weird dog, right? He's, he's been through something. So that was the general idea. All right. That's great. Did you, did you know much of the background of the game or anything? Or anything? No, I still don't. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you can explain a bit after this. So uh, let's see. We have Inon Mojo <laughs> in the final name. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, let's see. It, it works. So, Mojo Kid. Yeah, so actually something that happens to me a lot is that I'm really excited to do something. I'm really like eager to do it. And then I realized that it has like nothing to do with the game. So uh, <laughs> this time I was really careful of this. Uh, at first I really, especially because of the backward movement of the camera, I really wanted to record like um, kind of backwards guitar and bass and also put a backwards re reverb on it. Um, so I got so immersed in it that I kind of um, didn't notice the narrat narrative of the of the movie, which is, well, movie, like 45 seconds, but still, like the narrative is that you're kind of lost in the forest and in the end there's like this, um, basically this beast in front of you that's like growling and so that, when I realized that, I really tried to, to make the suspense in the end and I think that um, added a lot to it, so, yeah. <laughs> the mood was quite uh, from the horror movie, almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Anything else to add? Uh, no, I, I really liked it, actually. I really liked the, the way it was made, the, the video. All right. Then we have Inom Zur. Are you ready? Thanks. Uh, so basically, uh, for me, it was all about the movement of the camera, but the feel of the chase and the shortness of breath when you're being chased. So sometimes you need to emulate something, and sometimes, specifically when it comes to trailer, you really want to show it the way it is. So there are two elements here, or three elements, that really were important for me. First, I recorded myself breathing. <laughs> like this but then I totally distorted it and brought it down like a fifth and it kind of like made it weird and then I had the heartbeat and the heartbeat is basically getting faster and faster and faster and the breath is coming faster and faster so it basically complements the movement of the camera and then there is the orchestra that starts really really low and basically glisses all the way up so all of these basically together create some sort of like complimenting the movement but also bring the tension and you feel really the shortness of breath uh, you know that I didn't know what's the real narrative here but I felt that I'm being chased so this is basically what I wanted to bring 
Well, that came out probably. <laughs> I felt chased over myself. Thank you. So, next we have Thor the Hammer. Thanks. Um, basically, when I first, the first time saw the movie, um, for you who don't know, uh, I uh, started opera singing and um, I uh, sung the whole Winter Rise from Schubert. And um, I uh, saw it and the first thing I had was the same feeling I had often when I was singing uh, the Winter Rise. And for me, it was like, okay, I nailed it just down to that feeling. That's it. Because, um, yeah, I think every time, like, Media is about emotional context, emotional story. Um, that's our job to tell. It's not our job to write music. It's our job is to tell the emotional story. And um, yeah, I just captured that feeling. And then uh, I didn't want to make sound design because it's like slow motion. And I'm like, when it comes to sound design, I would be like, okay, it should be altered then also because in slow motion sound also alters. And um, so I just st stick with the voiceover and that's it. It was like really stupid recording. I would never record vocals like that. <laughs> but <laughs> I just did it with a with like a headset microphone. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this in the end, this stray, it was like, like you tell a dog, like stay, but then like stray. That was basically the idea. <laughs> yeah. Double the action, triple the excitement. Now it's my turn. Use the piano. So um, uh, I, I thought that I didn't have any time to create anything, but I'm happy to create something with you guys. And uh, I actually worked this trailer about two hours. It was based loosely on my previously composed stuff that I haven't released. So that was that why it was so fast to create it. But I really thought that kind of melody here would be great with the visuals I'm seeing but for the trailer itself I would have talked with you know the trailer guys that maybe remove all of the text from the you know middle of the film and add something like survive in the wild <laughs> straight uh, the, I need to say here that the the title like the original trailer doesn't have titles so we added it for this panel to have something to sync to uh, but the original one is just you know, one shot of everything going back. Because I, I think it's beautiful, the, you know, visuals there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the titles are here so that, like, the music can sync to something, even though most uh, just gave up on that. So I'm not sure if it was a good idea, but that was the logic behind it, to kind of create moments where the music can sync up to. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know if you really noticed, but the there's really no sync to the titles. It's, like, completely weird, yeah. like, <laughs> in between everywhere. <laughs> this is, like, basically when... And a video editor would never cut this in like that. <laughs> so I, I first saw it also and I thought like, 
okay, that's weird. And then um, she told me, and this is like, ah, oh, okay, that's the reason why this is. Yeah. So yeah, the original one is just a uh, long, just uh, one shot of the camera going back. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we talk about our work yet, or do we go to the original one? Let's see the original. Who actually made music for this? Atano Suato? Atana Suato, okay. Is he here? Oh, damn. Is he Polish? <laughs> I actually didn't thought the game as kind of this kind of uh, type in the mood because I didn't know the background. For me, it seemed like a horror game. I think we all went to the you know suspense uh, or more orchestral or um, on, you know that general direction. So, but this is actually really interesting to see. Like this colors it in a whole different way, right? How about you guys? Uh, did you thought this original would be like this? I had no idea. Like, uh, I didn't expect it something like this. But when I saw it, it like I could understand like wh why they did this uh, kind of music. It's put it in another uh, uh, in another kind of mood, uh, which actually works. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I, it just makes it a little bit lighter, a little bit more realistic. And sort of like, um, I, you know, I, I actually think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea to do it uh, with a song because it, it just, it's unexpected. And this is what's so great about it. Um, I think that ma many times that um, when we see like a game characteristic, uh, for example here, like the eeriness of it and like the, the way that it's a bit like disturbing, you, you have like a choice to support it um, via like reinforcing it or you can counter it and then support it like for example if there is something really like disturbing but there is a really nice music a lot of times it will be even more disturbing so it, it will just like um, kind of sh uh, uh, show it better and i think that's a really good example for it yeah, it's interesting. yeah um, i just really quite like it i mean this is like uh you know, sometimes you, you just do the counterpart to what the picture is showing. So you do something completely different just to even um, get the picture more in the in the front. So, um, and this is like, uh, we all have seen movies like Full Metal Jacket or like, like um, uh, Apocalypse Now and movies like that where this is used a lot like to just counter it with different music, like with, with all this Vietnam War music. When we think of Vietnam War, we think about this Apaches going to the sky and hear this, this rock and roll music, right? So um, this is uh, the, the hippie music. And this is like the same thing happening here. It kind of gives me the same feeling than watching these movies. So, so, so like, in, like in all our versions, the, it's, you know, the ending is very dramatic, very yeah. like the, there is something wrong going on. And the, this music, for me at least, kind of turns the, go, the, the dog into something cool, right? Yeah. You, you want to be the dog. He's, <laughs> he's like a exactly, walker. Yeah. <laughs> so this brings to me to question the communications between game company, movie company and the trailer uh, the creators and the musician. What do you think are the hardest things to get through, hardest things to understand when starting a new project? The what hardest things? Well, well, yes, but what would you ask more from the guys who ordered you to create music? Um, first of all, I would ask to think really more earlier about 
involve music into the whole project chain so really start talking about it because that's something i really ex ex experience a lot it starts really late so um the hardest thing um often or the most i'm uh, asking uh, when when it comes to music for for some media it's uh like okay what what is this all about and what was your intention to start the whole game so what is what is your your id behind all of that so what's your your inspiration so I, that i can um sync with their inspiration so that we came from this, come from the same point of inspiration so that's the thing i do most and first to get a feeling of what they feel to cover that in the music yeah i i find that many times the the hardest thing is actually like you as an artist you have um you need to do a work of translation actually from what they feel to how you express it in your in your music so i actually created a little like um a brief in uh, google forms where the they need to kind of rate the game characteristics in terms of um i don't know dark and bright and like soft and hard and just uh, really like emotions. And uh, once they do that, I think it also makes them kind of think about their own game in a, in a different way that maybe they, they didn't before. But um, yeah, then my work is to translate that into music, but that I can do. The, the, the hardest thing is to make them express uh, what they want to um, bring out with the game. For me, I mean, it is all about the differences between each audio director and producer. Some producers, know exactly what they want some producer think they know what they want but actually they don't and some producers say that they don't know what they want and that's probably the hardest part so when you start a project um you really it's there is just no way around it there is a, a trial and error um period that you start to basically you know let them tell you what they want and if there are any specific examples and then you write something to them and they say no it's terrible and then after that you start to go back and forth now what makes the whole um process a little easier and this is what i'm always doing with all the games that i did is spending at least a day in the studio with them learning about the games not talking only about with the producers but also with the other director with the game designers with the artists that are drawing everybody has something to contribute so and i'm basically get, gathering all this information after that it's just easier to know that you're pretty much on the same page and from then on only tweaks yeah uh, i agree with you on it um and with everyone what the the hardest part is of course to to nail the first uh, uh version or the to to get to find the, the correct mode of the game and when you find that it's uh it's much easier to continue from there and start to to tie uh, more music and uh, get the, the work done um i think like uh, at the most uh, parts when, when you start to work on a project to write music for you you want as much inspiration that you can uh, from the game as you know said like uh, every i always ask for as much art as i can get and as much gameplay uh, demos and just to know every tiny part of the uh, game uh, and then it starts to tell me what what kind of music like the game itself tells me what kind of music does, uh, does it needs and uh, another challenge is also like there's always what the producer and the uh, game designers want to the music and there's always the uh, sometimes they don't really know and you need to find together like try to get into their head and uh, find something that will actually be the the music in their head without them even knowing that first so it's always like uh, to to give a birth to something new yeah um, I, the question is about trailers or uh, or games because well both so I think trailers are a bit different from um, from that point because everyone in this industry are like you know very artistic but uh, where I, it's a good thing for games but a trailer at the end of the day should sell and I think both the musicians and the companies kind of tend to go to um, what's more artistic and what makes more sense and forget that 
the job of the trailer is to get the people to buy the game and then experience all the artistic side and it needs to work together and not just uh, uh, not that that's why the for me the original version worked best you know I was you know, oh yeah. this is this might be I like I like this kind of music I hope the soundtrack is it's, it's the question of when you see the, the, the you know the last the, the actual logo of the game at the end if you're thinking to yourself oh this is so awesome I have to play it or like this is this is what you want right you if you're feeling like oh this was very artistic like it's a good thing but that's not the job of, of a trailer uh, and I think that getting that right like me keeping true to the essence of the game and and what you want to say with the trailer but still making it like commercial let's let's say it's uh, it's pretty ex important um, for the game itself I think what everyone said is um, I pretty much have the same answer it's also kind of forgetting about what's cool and doing uh, nailing the right atmosphere and the right music you know like sound palette for for the game um, because I'm sure I'll, all of us kind of made the situation where you're working with a game designer or uh, and then he just wants to put the music that he likes in the game which has nothing to do with the game and it doesn't work for the game but he's like into you know black I don't know Viking black metal and it's like <laughs> so he's like yeah yeah let's do that and a lot of the times it doesn't work so nailing the mood exactly I, I can add you know this was good I can add that I usually do a custom music playlist at least on Spotify and we watch like clips from YouTube from different TV series film series to get like their like what what is the mood that they're actually talking about can you have some reference about that and you know when we have done reverse reference list it's like collecting the right parts from the reference and you know trying to know the feeling that they're after for me it kind of speeds up things with you know you don't just need to talk you can listen and watch yeah, because you don't talk the same language at the end of the day so references are the best way of communication and unless you're working with an audio director or someone who's actually like you know, a musician so we have still have almost five minutes time would we like to have questions from the audience maybe anybody All right then. Who's still drunk? Who has a hangover? I think the main question is why <laughs> is this at ten in the morning? <laughs> I heard it's soothing the souls of the tired party people. That's what I heard. So let's invent a question. So let's talk about your future. What are you gonna do next? What's your next big thing? What's coming out? Is there anything you're expecting to do? Cool shit. Yes, but we can't say. <laughs> yes, of course, NDA. <laughs> I'm not talking about names, but you know, kind of stuff you really want to. Yeah, um, it's ba basically um, not really a game. It's life is like a company with sample libraries, so we make like all the tools for us musicians in the end. So. Um, and uh, we started working on something that hasn't been sampled and done yet. And um, this is like a vocal library based on the civil system throughout all the Scandinavian languages. Um, and uh, we also take like Proto-Norsk stuff in it. And um, I mean, there is a lot of stuff just in theory because we have like really less written down about Proto-Norsk. Um, to explain Proto Norse, who don't know, this is like before um, the Viking Age, the Scandinavian language before the Viking Age, that is more really also tied to like Celtic languages and all the the um, Northern Germany languages you are part. Um, so this is something that is uh, because I think like Scandinavian languages when you put all of them together you have like a really good pool of um voices and we do it in single voices not choir um really good pool of voices to create a choir to um make sound design to alienate voices so this is a tool for sound designers for for composers um a, a musical tool also and also a sound design tool and yeah we are in the recording process and we are doing that and this is like we are going completely over notch we have like the first 
vocal is um, is done, the recording process. We have every time female, male, from every um, language, and it's like a 20 gigabyte sample material. So vocal libraries mostly by then we have like seven or ten or maybe 12 gigabyte, and going completely over the top and doing this in a real big thing so that you can just pull everything out there. All right. Yeah. Anything else to add, to guys? <laughs> I'm working on a few projects that, again, I cannot talk about. One project that I can talk about it because they're revealing it uh, this coming E3 in Los Angeles called Durango, and it's by Nexon. And it is pretty much the first sort of like serious role-playing game on a mobile, which is also an online game. Very cool um, concept. Graphic is amazing. Um, you could go on the website, see a little bit about it, uh, but uh, or wait for E3, and then you know tell more about it. So I think you guys are the first pretty pretty much to know that this is like one project that I can actually speak about. Sounds cool. Yeah. Also the the Scandinavian thing. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. I, I would want to use that. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, for the next season, I'm going to work uh, actually on uh, three feature films, which is uh, something I didn't got yet to do, uh, like a full uh, scale film. So this is going to be very exciting. And uh, also another uh, uh, VR game, which is going to be by Cartoon Network. And I wish I could tell more about that project. Yeah, um, yeah so I have my music projects and I have the company that I was telling about and we're turning music albums to video games. So we have the Birdcage, which is coming out at the um, beginning of next year um, and it's going to be pretty cool. And then we have another project lined up after that that I can't say. So a lot what about you? Well, uh, I'm I'm doing lots of stuff right now. So next game is going to be Next Machine about Holzmark. It's going to be Synthwave stuff. And then there's still going to be Matterfall, also from Holzmark. And Frozen Bite, Nine Parchments, and Armada. You know, I've been busy. <laughs> so yeah, I think sense. five games coming out this year. So <laughs> I'm dying. Help me. <laughs> anyway, I think our time is up. Can we all just take a selfie? <laughs> take a selfie and come up and do the composer thing that we can all. You know, my hello, audience. <laughs>